Ladies and gents, welcome to GBX and this is Hell to Reach Part 1 Prologue, a Warhammer 40k story by the channel Richard Boylan. Wait a minute, this is the guy who uh, made the Guardsman 2018 uh, video that I reacted to. It was a fucking awesome fan film. So yeah, this is a series of the video. I guess there are 13 parts of this. This fan work is 100% unofficial and in no way endorsed by Games Workshop. Voiceovers from the audiobook Hell's Reach. Yeah, that description, I can feel nervousness there. Like, oh, this is unofficial, don't come after me, Games Workshop, that kind of thing, yeah. So, yeah, apparently Games Workshop, you know, it clamps really hard down on people who make content about Warhammer 40,000, which is not official. So, yeah, apparently this survived at least. So, yeah, let's always one. People are saying that this is really, really good, right? Really good made, you know, good, really, you know, awesomely made fan film, let's just say. Yeah, I haven't slept, I'm kind of out of it, so yeah. So, you know, the, it's, it's a guardsman was so awesome, right? Like how uh, basically an imperial imperial guard was just there fighting Tyranids. And then suddenly an Astartes arrive, right? <laughs> that was just fucking awesome. So this one was the same guy, so it's gonna be just, yeah. Remember, if you like my reaction, don't forget to like, subscribe, check out the Rick Sunday, there's a link in the description. Check out the cards, we'll the link cards, and yeah, let's watch it. Following fan work is unofficial, yeah, he said that. He had to put that in the video too now. Games Workshop. I will die on this world. I cannot tell where this conviction comes from. Whatever birthed it is a mystery to me. And yet the thought clings like a virus, blooming behind my eyes and taking deep root within my mind. Damn. It almost feels real enough to spread corruption to the rest of my body, like a true sickness. It will happen soon, within the coming nights of blood and fire. I will draw my last breath, and when my brothers return to the stars, my ashes will be scattered over the priceless earth of this accursed world. Armageddon. Even the name twists my blood until burning oil beats through my veins. Wait a minute, I remember this. Somebody's uh, commented about Armageddon, I think. Armageddon is a planet where first time, I think, Imperium uh, f uh, fought chaos or something, right? Am I mistaken that? I'm pretty sure that's the case. First, th th there has been a war with chaos and Imperium on Armageddon. Right, and then some orc, uh, you know, attacks, but that's basically everywhere. So yeah, the first chaos attack happened here. Okay. I love how this already began, right? How he's like, where this conviction came from, I don't know, that this, that's just... The, the delivery is so fucking awesome, like, I'm gonna die on this planet, that's just heavy. I feel anger now, hot and heavy, flowing through my heart and filtering into my limbs like boiling poison. My hands curl into fists. I am strong. Born only to slay for the Emperor and the Imperium. Damn, that's I so true. Pure, wearing the blackest of the black. Trained to serve as a spiritual guide as well as a war leader. I am Wrath Incarnate. Living only to kill until finally... I am a weapon in the eternal crusade to forge humanity's mastership of the stars. Its strength, purity, and wrath will not be enough. I will die on this world. I will die on Armageddon. Oh my god. I have chills. Literally chills, man. The music, the art, the way he draw it. If he had made this with high quality graphics with the latest engine, it wouldn't have been this good. This kind of uh, graphics that he used is perfect for this. The storytelling, the voice, the basically how, you know, the, the, describing how he's going to die, 
uh, how, the revelation that how he's going to die on Armageddon, this kind of a graphics, the music playing in the background. Holy shit, this is so good. Damn. I mean, yeah, that th that is so true, isn't it? That, uh, you know, all the soldiers are start is basically gets born, you know, their whole life's purpose is to, I guess, slave to the emperor to just to fight because there's only war. Fight and kill until they themselves get killed. And that's their life. That is so grim. <laughs> Fuck me. This is so good. Wait a minute, why is always from the audiobook Hellsuit? So Hellsuit is some kind of an official thing, like some kind of book that Warhammer created is something something like that. Or uh, the uh, audiobook, also, audiobook is also created by Richard Berlin. Is that it? No, it's from Aaron Dembski Bowden. I guess this is the guy who created Hell's Reach, the book. And uh, this channel is just basically uh, creating this kind of artwork and making this. Yeah, this is awesome. Let's watch part two. I want to thank over response part one. I first discovered the 40k universe when I was serving in Afghanistan almost 10 years ago. Found a Gaunt's Coast novel laying around, decided to give it a read, and I was hooked ever since. As a filmmaker, I've always thought it would be awesome to make a 40k movie, and now I feel like I am, regardless of how small the scale may be, you know, this is so fucking good. Because of the small scale and the graphics he's using, it's perfect. Sometimes, you know, I, I, I've come to realize this in many fronts, that the best is not necessarily the best or better, right? If he, if he had used the best graphics and created some kind of next, uh, next level graphics type of thing that looks realistic, he wouldn't have the same impact as this sketch type of artwork ha has, basically. So, whatever he's doing is perfect here. So yeah, let's watch this one. <laughs> That's some intro. In the holiest chamber of our ancient flagship, I lower myself to one knee and bow my head, because this is what is asked of me. Grimaldus, High Marshal Helbrecht intoned. His voice was a guttural rumble, rendered harsh from yelling orders and battle cries in a hundred wars and a hundred worlds. We have summoned you to be just. I have answered the summons. I submit myself before your judgment, my liege. Mardred is dead. Helbrecht's voice was a deep murmur. Slain by the archenemy. You, Grimaldus, have lost a master. We have all of us lost a brother. It was the belief of Reclusiarch Mordred that upon his death, you would be worthiest of our brother chaplains to stand in his stead. His final decree was that you, of all your brethren, would be the one to rise to the rank of... Reclusiarch! The figure inclined his head in greeting. Arterium, 
We draw near to our destination. I took the liberty of readying the squad for Planetfall. This world will burn. It will not be the first, no. nor the last. Have you seen the projections? The fleet auguries, the number of vessels in the local systems already. Yeah, I lost interest when the numbers became too high for me to count on my fingers. <laughs> Artarian snorted at his own weak jest. We will fight and win, or fight and die. All that ever changes is the color of the sky we fight under, and the shade of the blood on our blades. My brother's names are Artarian, Priamus, Kador, Nerova, and Bastilan. Okay, that's his squad, I guess. These are the knights that have waged war beside me for decades. Yeah. We are the knights of Squad Grimaldus. Within his veins, Cador carries the blessed blood of Rogal Dawn with what seems like weary honor. He is older than I, older by far. His decades within the Sword Brethren are behind him now. Primus is the rising sun to Cador's dusk. He is aware of his. So apparently, this war that is happening on this planet of Armageddon. Uh, this our protagonist has been promoted basically him and his space marines are promoted because their master died <laughs> That's a fucked up right that other guy basically said I lost interest when the number became way too high Then I can count on my finger or something like that I'm <laughs> like damn in the unsubtle and undignified way of many young warriors a Blade master he calls himself It is not mistaken Arterion is... Arterion. My shadow, just as I am his. It is rare among our number for any knight to lay aside personal glory, yet Arterion is the one who carries my banner into battle. Nerevar is the newest among us. The squad required the presence of an apothecary. In the trials, only Nerevar impressed the rest of us with his quiet endurance. Bastilan is last. Bastilan, always the best and least of us all. A leader, but not a commander. An inspiring presence, but not a strategist. Forever a sergeant, never fated to rise as a Castellan or Marshal. My brothers go through the same rituals of checking and rechecking. A curious sense of unease descends upon me. It is my belief, not merely the wish of your fallen master, that you should take the honor we offer you now. You have waged war at my side for two hundred years, Grimaldus. Will you stand at my side as reclusiarch of the Eternal Crusade? Yes. So basically, uh, their whatever ship or whatever that was, right, was coming down and got basically got hit with an enemy attack. And the master died, is that it? Damn. I love how the basically story progresses while they're traveling down and everybody's attacking them. They show he shows them bobbing and you know moving because they're coming down in a capsule type of thing. My leash.
I dub the Reclusiarch of the Eternal Crusade. As a Knight of the Inner Circle, let that be the last blow you receive unanswered. It will be so. Wait a minute, that's some kind of a ritual? As it should be. Hello, I was confused. Like, why the fuck did he hit him? It's like, let's let that be the last attack you, you know, you go unanswered or something. That was so fucking awesome. Let that come some kind of a ritual or something they do. Yeah, so basically the prologue was the, uh, you know, near end of the war, I guess, where he has this, uh, you know, basically revelation that he's going to die there in this war, right? And he's angry about it, emotions are running through him. That was the prologue. The second part shows the beginning of this. Him and his group of space marine and his master, basically the leader, uh, you know, were basically coming down on, you know, on capsule type of thing. And when they attacked, got attacked by a missile or whatever, you know, their master died, so he became the leader of the group now. And they are going to attack, I guess. Who who are they attacking against, though? Is this uh, Army of Chaos or something? Who is the enemy here? But yeah, so I guess that we are going to go through 13 parts of this Hell's Reach. Throughout them, we are going to go through the mentality of our protagonist, how he's feeling, right? I mean, obviously, the narration is so good. Right, it's really deep. Emotions runs, you know, really deep. I guess in this one, uh, I like how you know he was coming down the capsule. Uh, the firing was happening all around it. You could hear that those you know, uh, you know, attacks, bombs, and things in the distance while they're talking. It adds that war elements to it. It's so fucking awesome. So we're gonna see how he progresses and come to a point where he realizes that I'm gonna die there, and actually probably will die there in the end. Because let's be honest, this is Warhammer 40k, grim dark world, of course he's gonna die in the end. Yeah. By the way, it doesn't matter what, doesn't matter how much you're in hurry, do not work out, you know, hurry I guess, in hurry, whatever. Because, you know, I've been working out for five years, right? I know how you can get hurt or not, right? I know everything in that area, and yet I still got hurt. Yeah, I was doing pull-ups, weighted pull-ups, and I hurt my back, apparently, for whatever reason. And I'm a bit of worried right now. I hope it's no spinal injury or something. It doesn't feel like it. It's probably just muscle strain, but we'll see. Hades Hive. I like the sketch style. Orcs? I thought it was chaos. It's orcs? Okay, damn, who was that though? Who's that one guy?
57 years later, okay. All right, <clears throat> first of all, uh, you know, I remember Armageddon, the planet, was fighting against chaos or something. The ca it was chaos influenced or something. I remember hearing about that from Lutin's video or Tamplin Institute, I don't remember exactly. But this is apparently second war of Armageddon 57 years ago from this point, apparently. Uh, th there were orcs. Somebody comment down who knows about this detail, like who is this war against? What is the setting? Is it against the orcs or is it against the forces of chaos? Who is taking over the planet? You know, just, you know, comment down the base story of it so it's easier for me to react going forward. Are you Kirov? I am. We are the Emperor's Knights. We are the warriors of the Eternal Crusade and the sons of Rogal Dawn. I am Helbrecht, High Marshal of the Black Templars. With me is Bayard, Emperor's Champion, and Grimaldus, Reclusiarch. We come to offer you our blades, our service, and the lives of over 900 warriors in the defense of your world. Kurov stood in silence. 900 Astartes. Oh, yeah? Entire star systems were conquered with a fraction of that. I am glad to hear it. Seriously, the 900 Astartes. First of all, 900 spacemen, isn't that uh, a proper, what is it called, a group? What is it, a league, whatever, isn't that thousand space marine in one league or something? And league, I don't know what it's called, one squad of our studies, like they're named the studies every time, right? There are, uh, whatever, uh, there are thousands, uh, th nine, 600 to thousand per uh, squad or something, right? Squad, what is it called? I don't know, one one group of studies. And among them, there is always one gray knight or something like that. So this is an entire 900... Space Marines, right? Entire group of them just to take over this planet. The guy's probably like, uh, okay. <laughs> now welcome to Armageddon. What? What is this? Hades Hive will not survive the first week. The man speaking is ancient. And he looks every hour of his age. Both piety and hate echo in his every word. Okay. His name is Sebastian Yarrick. Even we Astartes must respect that name. What is coming in... This is the guy who was 57 years ago against the orcs. Apparently survived. Against the horde of orcs. ...system now far exceeds what has laid waste to the planet before. The other hives must be... Reinforced a thousand times over. Hades will burn. At our best estimations, Battle Fleet Armageddon, the orbital defenses, and the Astartes fleets remaining in the void will be able to deny the enemy landing for nine days. These are our best estimates. And the worst? Four days. Once the orbital war is lost, be it four days or nine, our fleets will break from the planet in a fighting withdrawal. From then on, Armageddon will be defenseless beyond what is already entrenched upon the surface. The orcs will be free to land whatever and wherever they wish. Who will lead the Astartes vessels? Uh, given his seniority and the expertise of his chapter, High Marshal Helbrecht of the Black Templars will take overall command of the Astartes fleets. We are to remain in orbit. We are the obvious choice to command the Astartes elements in the orbital battles. I was wrong. I will not die in futility on this world. High Marshal, 
We can slaughter the Greenskin Tyrant before he even sets foot on the world below us. I have already spoken with the other Marshals, my brother. We must leave a contingent on the surface to defend one of the Hive Cities that yet remains ungarrisoned by Astartes. That is not our duty, my liege. And yet, a commander must remain. Okay. Don't, don't do this. It is already done. No! This is not the time. The decision is made, Grimaldus. I know you as I knew Mordred. You will not refuse this honor. I would burst the great enemy's black heart in my hand and cast his blasphemous flagship to the surface of Armageddon wreathed in holy fire. Do not leave me here, Helbrecht. Do not deny me this glory. You will not refuse this honor. Wait, um. brother. Alright, so instead of the main battle in the space, uh, he's gonna be left behind in a in guarding a one place where he does he really doesn't want to do, where he really doesn't want to die on the Armageddon. Plot <laughs> of dawn. Now that's a sight. Their destination was called, with bleakness so typical of this world, Hell's Reach. Ah, oh, now they go. We cannot be the only Astartes strength sent to this city. We will not be alone. The Guard is with us, and militia forces. Humans! The Legio Invigilata has landed to the east of the city. Titans, my brother. I don't see you sneering at that. Alright. Titans will do it. How can we defend all this? With Blade and Bolter. With Faith and Fire. So apparently they are not alone. They have Imperial Guard, even though they don't think highly of them. Kind of understandable. They are Space Marines and they are just Imperial Guards. And obviously Titans are with them. So they are supposed to defend this place, Hell's Reach. So we are going to see a, you know, basically last stand type of story where they make the last stand there. It's going to be fucking awesome. I love the graphics so far, the way he creates this kind of a black and white type of a, a sh shade. It gives depth to the whole storytelling. Why does this guy only have 82,000 subscribers? It should be much more. his hand man all roast his throat yeah you're gonna bleed out <laughs> the guy's badass so that guy is really, really old, apparently ancient, uh, and he's respected among the, you know, uh, space marines, apparently. Who was that guy? 
right? He 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 didn't look like a space marine because he wasn't wearing the power armor and shit. But who was that? What uh, what is he? Is he he's, he can't be an imperial guard, right? Since he's that much of a legend, he's not a space marine since he's not wearing the armor. I don't know. Is he one of those assassins? I don't know. Well, assassins work, uh, you know, in that way, just space of our prison. He, they don't just walk around and talk and give orders like that, right? So, I don't know. Who, who was that guy? Comment down, I guess. guy though. There's something coming out of his eye. There's some kind of a mechanic or something. I am Grimaldus, Reclusiarch of the Hell's Reach Crusade. I am Colonel Saren of the 101st Steel Legion and Overall commander of the Imperial Guard forces defending the Hive. Muted clicks could be heard every few seconds from the helms of the knights standing closest to him. Saren knew full well they were speaking with each other over a shared Vox channel. He didn't like it. Not at all. Who are these others? I would meet every commander of this hive, if they are present. They are present, so. Reclusiarch. Not sir. As you wish, Reclusiarch. Uh, this is Syria Tyro, Adjutant Quintus to General Kirov. Commissar Falkov of my command staff. This is Major Mordecai Riken, second officer of the 101st and XO of the City Defense. Uh, Commander Corton Barasath of the Imperial 5082nd Naval Wing. A pleasure to serve with the Black Templars again. I have served with the Knights of Dawn before. I have personally, nine years ago on Dathax, and the 5082s have on no fewer than four separate occasions. Sixteen of our fighters are marked with the Heraldic Cross, with permission given by Marshal Tarasson of the Dathax Crusade. I am honored, Barasath. The most honorable Moderati Primus Valian Carsomir of the Legio Invigilata, crewman of the blessed engine Storm Herald. Moderati, you speak with the voice of your legion? A full battle group. I am the voice of Princeps Majoris Zaha Mancio. The rest of Invigilata is committed to other engagements. Fortune favors us that you still remain. We have much to discuss. Indeed we do. This way, if you please. City. I am in command of a city. 
Preparations have been underway for months, but estimates pit the great enemy arriving in system within a handful of days. The hours pass in a blur of statistical outlays, charts, hololithic projections and graphs. The food supplies for the entire city. Ration projections, sustainable food ration planning. Unsustainable food ration planning, with appended lists of estimated sacrificial casualties. Estimates of disease once the city is shelled, and civilian casualties are too heavy to be dealt with efficiently. Types of disease, symptoms, severity, risk of contagion, compatibility with the orc genus, God, Imperial Guard numbers, throne what numbers, regiments, their officers, their live fire training accuracy records, their citations, their shames, their moments of greatest glory and ignominy in a host of distant worlds. The guard figures alone take two days to file through. And this, they say, is merely the overview. Coastal defenses, walls and turrets and anti-air towers. And okay, seriously, this this whole thing just gave me this. You no, know, there is. We know about every single area of people and legions and groups. Like there are imperial guards, there are space marines, there are mechanicals who makes the uh, different shit. There are inquisition. There are te lords of terrors and all the organizations below them. But we never heard of the people behind the desk, basically, who file shit. Because that must be a ridiculous effort, too. Because we all know that organizing something goes, you know, uh, you know difficult tenfolds every time it gets bigger and bigger. So I guess, you know, the more bigger it gets, the difficulty of, you know, managing all that goes tenfolds every time, not double. So at this scale, right, at this scale of, uh, you know, managing everything... The people who file shit, you know, gather intelligence and, you know, push the paperwork through. Who are these people? Seriously, I mean, they, that must be a ridiculous job and stressful job. Because if they fuck up, lots of things could get fucked up, I guess. And I love the, I love the story, the way it's taking, like, Grimaldis' job is to defend a city because orcs are going to attack this, basically. So, you know, they are, have projections, they're projecting how much disease they're going to broke through once the war is here, how many people are going to die, what are we going to do about that, right? All the weapons, management of that, management of all the guards. I love this. I love story. I love how it started too. Like some guys just walking around with something me mechanical thing coming out of his eye and then Grimaldis arrives. Before that, we hear wind, I guess, you know, hitting things and wind sounds. But, you know, Richard Bolin is really great in making, I guess, uh, scenarios and movies type of shit. I, I guess you know, the Guardsman 2018 from this channel as well, if I remember correctly. Trade requirements and union complaints and petitions arguing over docking rights and warehouses appropriated as barracks for soldiers and complaints from merchants and dock officers and... Oh. And I endure this for nine days. Nine days. You know, there's a fight, I guess. What is that? Throne of the God Emperor. What? People of Hive Hell's Reach, do not be alarmed. The enemy fleet has translated in system. The might of Battlefleet Armageddon and the greatest Astartes fleet in Imperial history stands between our world and the foe's forces. Maintain your daily rites of faith. Trust in the God Emperor of Mankind. That is all. You. Hail the Black Templar flagship Eternal Crusader immediately. I, I, I my lord, I, I am coordinated. 
do it! Now! Yes, my lord. A moment, please. The Eternal Crusader is making ready to engage the enemy fleet. I, I can send a message, but their two-way communications are in lockdown without the proper command codes. Do you have the codes, my lord? I am being a fool. My fury is blinding me to my sworn duty. I have the codes, but this is not an emergency. Simply send the following message to their incoming logs with no need for a reply. Fight well, brothers. I love how this paints a picture about Grimaldi. It's like he might be a great leader for his unit at least, but he's uh, not, uh, you know, more of a bigger picture kind of guy. Like he puts his emotion of fighting honorably somewhere else than seeing the task of how complicated it is to defend the city and the, defending the people there. I guess he only cares about fighting the main enemy head front honorably, I guess, you know, more glorious way than just getting stuck here. So I guess he doesn't have that kind of a mentality, at least yet. So he might be a great fighter, great commander even, right? To, you know, uh, basically fight in the field with his, uh, you know, his space marines. But as a helmsman, he's not that great when it comes to, I don't know, uh, tackle an operation at this scale. I guess, is that going to cost him? something going forward will that be the reason he dies in the end because as be honest this is a warhammer story he probably will die maybe right because that's how the <laughs> entire story started like i'm gonna die on this rock so he probably will since this is warhammer story sent lord my thanks forgive me a moment school we have a water plan Until their dying nights, the warriors of the Hell's Reach Crusade bore their lamentations and rage with all the dignity that could be expected of them. But it was no easy feat. No easy feat to be consigned to a city of several million frightened souls, while above the stained clouds, hundreds upon hundreds of their battle brothers were carving their glory from the steel and flesh of an ancient and hated foe. The Black Templars across the city looked skyward as if their helm's red eye lenses could pierce the wretched clouds and see the holy war above. Give the order to Imperial forces throughout Hell's Reach. Martial law is in immediate effect. Seal the city. All right, <laughs> that was fucking awesome, right? I love how this story is building up. I mean, uh, you know, uh, if I were to say one thing to Grimaldi, think like this. What if everybody fails and orc wins in the sky, basically, where they're fighting? Then you are the, literally the last defense for this planet. But I think he knows that even that happens, by then they're dead. Because if all that fleet cannot defeat the orcs, what the fuck are they going to do, trying to defend the city? But it would be, still be glorious, like how many... People, how many orcs uh, you know, does he take out? And, you know, I remember uh, reading about the orcs, like fighting the orcs is always the most difficult thing that is, because even if you defeat them on the ground, uh, there's a chance they'll basically, you know, their spores or whatever, that's how they repopulate, will pop out somewhere, uh, you know, some place, and they grow from there. It's like an infestation type of thing. Maybe that's why they're trying to fight in space, making sure that orcs never land on the planet. Three days. In three days, they will decide if they are to 
come to our aid or deploy along the Hemlock River with the rest of their legio. There's a chance they will not even walk in our defense. So it seems. I am going to the view tower. Is the Moderati Primus still within the hive? Uh, yes, Rakusiak. Tell him to meet me there. Uh, be polite, but do not ask. Tell him. The shaking is a bit too much, but alright. <clears throat> This is the greatest of Armageddon's port cities. We are about to be assaulted by the largest green-skinned breed Xenos invasion ever endured by the Imperium of Man. We must have Titans, Casimir. I am aware of your need. My need? It is the Hive's need. Armageddon's need. As you say, the Hive's need, but I am not the Princeps Majoris. I report on the Hive's defenses to her, and the decision is hers to make. Wait a minute, they, they have one of the most frightening invasion from the, you know, uh, the orcs there, and they don't even have the titans? I mean, how does that work? I get it, titans are rare, but still. The Invigilata has received strong petitions from other cities and other forces. I must speak with her. If you wish, I could perhaps arrange a conversation over the box. But I am here, a man of not inconsiderable station myself, to show that Invigilata is earnest in its dealings with you. I appreciate that. I am not blind to your rank. Tell me, Moderati, is it permissible to speak with your Princeps Majoris in person? No, Reclusia. That would be a violation of Invigilata tradition. Your objection is noted. And duly ignored. What? Artarian, ready the land raider. We're going out into the wastelands. Yeah, I can feel anger in him, you know. Uh, in the, even in the previous video, he almost lost it and sent out the, you know, basically a message. That basically, you know, was filled out of anger. In the last moment, he realized that I shouldn't do this. I shouldn't let my personal feeling get in the way. So, you know, when it comes to being a leader, the greater good, it's not his best uh, area, I guess. But he's coping so far. But you could feel the anger in him, right? He's getting more and more, you know, I guess, uh, how to say it? Uh, anxious, let's just say. More and more, every time I think, you know, he he doesn't care about small things here and there. Like, you know, the guy is like, no, you, you don't have permission. He's like, I don't need your permission. Fuck your tradition. It's a titan. Hold up the wait a minute. Titan has buildings in them? Because that feels like proper buildings where people basically walk around. It has, you know, roofs and everything. What? Really?
I am Grimaldus, Reclusiarch of the Black Temple. Your identity is known to us. The next time I am interrupted, I will kill one of you. We are not to be threatened. Neither are you to be addressed. You are nothing. Slaves, all of you. Barely above servitors. Now move aside. I have business with your mistress. We are not to be ordered into submission. We are to remain as duty demands. I will speak with the Princeps Majoris of Invigilata, even if I have to shout up to the cathedral itself. Reclusiarch, must we bear this foolish indignity? No. Kill them. I wish to speak with the intruders. Access granted. <laughs> That is what I thought you would say. Okay, I get it. This is really badass Chuck Norris type of moment, whatever. But is it really, uh, you know, is it really smart to piss off somebody who has control of Titan, right? At the last moments where there's about to be invasion and lots of people could be dying, it's not best to piss off people who has a Titan. And what if they basically lose their mind and attack you? You're supposed to take down a Titan now. I mean, it feels this feel. It's like somebody has a nuke and you shit talk to them. I just, even though if they are lower rank, I don't think that is what you should do. I guess. Make this count, brother. Trust me. Princeps Majoris, an honor to stand in your presence. Waste no time on pleasantries. Storm Herald waits, and soon I must walk. Speak. I am told by one of this Titan's pilots, as an ambassador to Hell's Reach, that Invigilata may not walk in our defense. This is so. I command one third of this legio. The rest already walks in defense of the Hemlock Legion. Many with your brothers, the Salamanders. Do you come to petition me for my portion of mighty Invigilata? I do not beg, Princeps. I came to see you with my own eyes and ask you face to face to fight and die with us. But you have not yet completed your intended duty, Astartes. Is that so? We are not face to face. You have very kind eyes. What is your name? Grimaldus of the Black Templars. Now we are face to face, Grimaldus of the Black Templars. You have been bold enough to come here and honor me with your face. I am no fool. I know how rare it is for a chaplain to reveal his human features to one not of his brotherhood. Ask what you came to ask and I will answer. Princeps Zaha, Hell's Reach calls for you. Will you walk? What is that, Prince of whatever? Is that supposed to be ghost, an entity? What is that? Invigilata will walk. Everybody's like, oh shit, it's a titan.
Welcome to Hell's Reach. Hail, Chaplin. I was born in a hive like this, you know. It is fitting then that you'll be dying here, Zaha. Do you say so, Sir Knight? Have you seen me today? It is impossible not to see you, Princeps. It's impossible to kill me as well. Remember that, Grimaldus. Hell's Reach was ready. And, as night fell, the sky caught fire. What? Oh shit, that's some... That's some scary shit, the, the size of the ship though, man, god damn. That was one of those ships, right? Uh... In uh, text to speech, as the emperor says that you know, it's making the ships uh, again, it's like impossible thing because of how gigantic they are. It was one of those ships, right? So, okay, first of all, Grimaldis is literally in charge of the Hell's Reach, right? Uh, but uh, why does he need to convince uh, whoever is in charge of the Titan? First of all, who was that prince or whatever he was he was talking about? Grimaldi was talking to. Was that a ghost, a spirit? It just looked weird. What was that? And why does he need to plead his case? I mean, does he have power because he's in charge of a certain task? Does he have power to call for some certain titan? Like, you know, just, I don't know, talk to his superiors like, I need a titan, give me here. Why does he need to go there and convince them? That doesn't feel like a chain of command type of thing. Usually if you want something, you go to your superior and basically talk to them to get your whatever. You don't need to plead the case, it just feels weird. So yeah, <clears throat> I love how, you know, this uh, shit is picking up, I guess. I like how in the end the ship crash showing that, yeah, basically they are losing in, up there. And, uh, you know, invasion will be coming there. I love how the titan is shown like a fucking titan as the word is meant. It is a humongous. And I love how it just basically walked into Hell's Reach and everybody's like, whoa, what the fuck? Because it's massive. So... And also that how she said, like, I, you know, okay, can you see me? It's, it's, it's impossible not to see you. So it's impossible to kill me as well because I'm a fucking titan. But don't orcs have titans too? I mean, I remember, uh, you know, uh, Templin Institute's video or was it Lutin's video? I don't, I don't think it was Lutin's. Maybe Templin's or, you know, yeah, Brickett's. In one of those videos, uh, I saw that how orcs also have gigantic fucking machines that are like titans. Obviously, they probably just scraped together whatever shit, basically scrap, weird looking scrap, and just thought it's a titan and it became a titan. But they have certain machines like that too, right? So, I don't know, one titan against a horde of orcs who probably will have titans with them too? I don't know. That the Imperium sweep of what? Uh, orc ship. I think it's an Imperium one, right? Orc ship looks all weird and things. Uh, the ship registers as the purest intent. An Astartes vessel, strike cruiser class, belonging to the Shadow Wolves. They fell at the Battle of Varadon eleven years ago. Their last companies were annihilated by the Tyranid breed Xenos. The Black Templars were with them at the end. What is the status of Battlefleet Armageddon? Holding, but we have a greater comprehension of enemy numbers now. The four to nine day estimate has been abandoned as of 30 minutes ago. This is the greatest Greenskin fleet ever to face the Imperium. Yeah. I like how he's just giving them his him fact of which ship that is and that guy's like I'm gonna start this myself. You think I don't know my brothers? Come on. The fleet's casualties are approaching a million souls. One or two more days at best. The crash ship. 
I suggest we hold, Reclusiarch. A handful of greenskin survivors cannot hope to survive an assault against the walls. They would be insane, even for orcs to try. Send a, a titan. I am not making a jest. Send a titan to obliterate the wreckage. Inspire the men. Give them an overwhelming victory before the true battle is even joined. That feels like a shitty thing to do. The Commissar is correct. Hell's Reach needs an overwhelming victory. That's not an overwhelming victory. It's like an easy victory. That's a cheap victory. That would basically send a message that we are such a fucking, you know, weak-ass bitches that we, we are destroying it rather than actually send troops in to fight. Just destroy the fucking ship. No, come on. It is time my knights took to the field. First sign of battle, you use your most powerful weapon. This is bad comedy. Fall back, dammit! Primus sensed another lecture about vain glory in his future. We will draw first blood, Grimaldus had said to them all, as if it was something to care about as if it would affect the final battle in any way at all. Join me, brothers. Well, did I just get confused or something? Didn't he say send in the Titan? That mahusive structures, why are they going themselves? I thought he said that he's right and they were about to send Titan or something. I don't know. Join me as I shake off this disgust at the stasis gripping my bones and slake my bloodthirst in holy slaughter. These warriors who called him vainglorious were blind to the truth. He was not rash, he merely trusted in his skills to carry him through any challenge. Was that a weakness? How could it be considered so, when Priamus's deeds and glories were already rising to eclipse those of his brothers? Priamus, leave him be. Let him hunt. He needs to stand alone for now. He needs discipline. He needs our trust. I smell fresh blood. A survivor, still bleeding. What the fuck? No. What did you say? I said, no. They always seem so immune to pain. But no. Look into its eyes, brother. Do you see? No, brother. If there is a lesson in this, I am blind to it. Let me end it. Its existence offends me. No. Its lifespan is measured in moments. Let it die in this pain. Okay, so far my analysis of Grimaldus and his psychology is that, you know, him leading an entire charge, like him, him being the leader of defending this invasion, I guess he's not used to that because he let his emotion get in the way a lot of times, even in the past, right? He, he was getting angry too much that why am I here? Why, why do I have this post? In the, I guess, uh, two parts ago, he was about to send some message to the fleet for certain things, then he stopped himself, obviously, in the end. But still, he let his emotions uh, get hold of him a lot of times. Even in here, orcs let him suffer. There's no point to this. There are way too many orcs, right? Their nature is to just fight. That's all they like. Making them suffer doesn't do something. I mean, this might be an over-analysis of it, but I think, you know, he let his emotion get in the way way too much, I guess. So, this role of him being the commander of a whole thing is, I guess, kind of a new thing, right? 
I mean, sure, he's a leader of, right now he's a leader of his Astartes group, but that's probably all he knows, right? Not to actually, you know, in charge of being a whole thing, like, you know, in charge of being defenders of the whole city or something like that. He's not great at that because he's new or something at this. I don't know. That's what I've, that's the vibe I'm getting. Bro, do you see something? Uh, yes, something. So enlighten me. It's Priamus. Isn't it always? I've lost his life signs. <laughs> that cannot be. Here, among this rabble, I do not make mistakes. What? Reclusiarch. The badass guy died? I've lost Priamus's life signs, sir. Brothers, maintain search and destroy orders. What? We need to be silent. I will find Priamus. Prime was the badass guy. Apparently his skill is really good, like he said. Died so something a bigger threat is on the safe, is that it? Oh shit. What happened to you, man? There you go. Or kill it? Come on. One or killing a space marine, a good one at that. That's a rage, isn't it? Greetings. <laughs> You're kidding me. There we go. Nero. Reclusiac. I have found Primus. Aft, deck four. Tertiary spine corridor. On my way. Assessment? Some kind of force discharging weapon. Uh. His armor is powered down, but he's still breathing. Three minutes, Reclusiak. I guess I'll just jumped him. Those horses. They shot me. Some kind of nerve weapon. Get away from me. Mm, his pride is hurt. Speak. I would hear your thoughts. I am not blind to your tensions of late. Duty is not always glorious. You have changed since inheriting Mordred's mantle. Uh, you are speaking foolishness. No, hear me. We have spoken, Cador, Nero, Bastelan, Primus, and myself. We must all deal with these changes, and we must all face this duty. Your darkness is spreading to the entire crusade. Reclusiak! Colonel Saren. Reclusiak! Throne of the God Emperor! It's truly beginning! Elaborate. Battlefleet Armageddon is in full retreat. The Astartes fleet is withdrawing alongside them. It's beginning! Has there been any communication from the Eternal Crusader? Yes. Shall I have the message relayed to you? At once, Colonel. Hell's Reach! This is the Crusader. We are breaking from the planet. The orbital war is lost. Hell is coming, brother. Oh, oh shit. Here it comes. That is some badass shit. Alright, I don't get one thing. If the entire fleet couldn't defend them, de defeat them in the space, basically, how are this one team in Hell's Reach is supposed to, you know, defend the entire city, right? That they're trying to invade the Hive City. 
which is what orcs want, right? They are coming after that. How is, you know, just one Astartes and whatever, you know, uh, Imperial Guards and whatever, you know, small team they have there. So, I mean, it's probably smaller than the fleet that they had in the space. How are they supposed to defend it? I don't know. I don't know how this uh, story is going to end. How many parts are there? I don't, even, I don't even know how many parts are there. But I don't know how this story is going to end. But holy shit, I'll be surprised if they win, right? I mean, it's a grim, dark future, right? So grim, dark means that I guess the surviving is a victory in itself. So I'm not sure, sure if they're going to win in the end or just going to survive or something. But yeah, it would be interesting. If, if they win, that would be fucking awesome. I mean, it, does the, is this story based on anything, uh, you know, real lore? Or is just, you know, a fantasy made up, uh, you know, fan story? I mean, I don't care either way. It's fucking awesome. But if this is not a real story, I think Games Works also consider adding this as a real story, you know? Did they hire Richard too uh, as a developer or something? They had that, you know, text-to-speech device guy. So did they hire Richard Boylan too? Because if they hire him, I guess they are going to take all this story as canon and add to the story. I don't know. I hope they do that. All right, people, if you like Rick's and don't forget to like, subscribe. Check out the Rick's handy. There's a link in the description. Check out the cards. Check out the cards. And yeah, I'll see you next time.